pretty much just watched Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse and I need to talk about it because I watched the original movie and absolutely loved it. So regardless of whether I liked the movie or not, I was probably going to end up making a video reviewing it anyway. First thing I'm going to say is this video might contain light spoilers. If so, I'll leave a warning, but it won't be anything major and I won't be going over proper spoilers of the movie at all since it's basically just came out. This is one of the only movies I've watched on the day of release in the cinemas. That's how much I was wanting to watch this movie and I'm happy I did. Now before I get into the proper review of the movie, I just need to rant about something. I had one of the most annoying experiences ever. Now I get that this movie is PG and kids of any age can watch a movie as long as there's parents with them obviously, which is fine. But in this case, it was not fine because Jesus Christ, these kids that were in the cinema with me were the most annoying little shits ever. Now I was actually a wee bit away from them and they were still annoying throughout this entire movie. They were just making tons of noise, they were like snickering, they were talking for like the majority of this fucking movie. There was even one kid that would start crawling up and down the steps of the middle of the fucking cinema during the movie, just crawling up and down staring at people. Like what the fuck is going on? What is this? It's not a fucking play park man, like this is a cinema. So all this shit is going on and then the parents are doing fuck all. I think the most that their parents done to stop this whole thing was when they went, oh, whatever the fucking kid's name was, I can't even remember, it was some fucking NPC name. Timothy, uh, stop, come over here. Probably said that once or twice. Every so often you'd hear like a quick, shh, like you're in a fucking library, and then they would just continue talking. It was, oh, fucking stupid, man. Like, why even take your kids to a movie that's two hours long, by the way? Taking them to a two-hour movie on the day of release? Like, are you trying to piss people off? But anyway, that was my rant. I'm just, I'm sorry. I had to get that off my chest. So my expectations for this movie were obviously very high, especially going off of the original movie, because the first movie was just so good. It just pushed the boundaries of animated movies, and it was just really impressive visually visually, but also had a moving and interesting story as well. But I'm just gonna say right now, I think this movie met my expectations, if not done better than I expected. So first thing I'll talk about, because it's the biggest thing here in a movie like this, is the animation. The animation and art style in this movie is absolutely phenomenal, and it's actually a proper step up from the original, I would say, which is extremely high praise. So throughout the movie, there's all these different animations and art styles for different dimensions, dimensions or different characters from different dimensions and these characters would have the same kind of style that their dimension would have and it would all just blend together when they were all on screen it just looked amazing and the original movie did do that to a certain degree but this one is just a completely different ball game which makes sense because obviously throughout the movie they're going through all these different dimensions and instead of just seeing a character in a different style you see the entire environment be animated in that style which just looks amazing and another thing that was really well done was certain scenes would have the animation change for a character to represent their mood in certain scenes, depending on what was going on and just kind of representing how that character's feeling in that scene with the animation and art style. And that was really cool. So even without any action scenes or you know, new environments, even in just scenes where people were talking, it was like a one-on-one -on -one kind of thing, there were still really interesting elements that were being used with animation and I really liked that and it really helped represent what was happening in the scene a lot better and made it more interesting and engaging and of course the action scenes as well were absolutely amazing in this movie. I can't praise it enough honestly. The amount of stuff that would be going on on the screen, the amount of different characters, all the different interactions. I mean I'm sure just looking at the trailers and seeing how many characters were on screen in some of those trailers you would know how much is going on in some of the scenes in the movie and it's just really impressive to watch. Next thing I want to talk about is the music. So the music in this movie wasn't as much of a standout as it was in the original for me. Now I really liked the songs in the original film. I thought they were really good and really matched the tone of the movie. Now it's not that I don't think the songs made specifically for this movie don't match the tone and aren't good because it is good quality music and it does match the tone of the movie especially for certain parts but it just wasn't as impactful 
heartful in this movie as it was in the original and it felt like it was more sparingly used in this movie. And there were also some scenes where there wasn't even any music used from those dedicated songs which was a wee bit disappointing but that being said I don't think it affected the movie at all and when music was used in the movie it was used well. It's not like it was out of place in any way. It just wasn't as impactful as the original was if that makes sense. But in terms of how good the music is on its own and all that stuff obviously I'm not gonna go over that because that's like really subjective but I think the music was still good overall. So now on to the story. Now I am not gonna spoil anything. I'm just gonna try and talk about more generally and you know not talk about anything specific as best I can. But one character that I think was utilized really well in this movie was the spot. I really liked him in this movie. He's just a very likable character but still has his share of more serious scenes. And yeah I just liked his entire involvement in the movie. I think it worked really well and I just think his character arc overall just blended really well with the pace and humor in this movie. I also really liked Gwen's involvement in this movie. She had a much more impactful role this time around and I just really liked it. I think her dynamic with Miles was good to watch. It was just entertaining and just her entire kind of story arc throughout this movie was just really good. It was just a good interesting plot point and just helped elevate certain characters. I really liked Miles and his interactions with his family and just how his character evolves throughout this movie and yeah just a lot of the problems his character comes across and the ups and downs he has throughout the movie it was just pretty relatable for most people and I just think it was managed in an interesting way. There were also some pretty heartfelt moments in this movie I'll say that as well which I also really liked made for a good change of pace as well. I think all the new characters introduced were really good they all fit really well into the movie. The only character I was kind of disappointed by and it really isn't a big deal at all is the roommate of Miles. Now I know what you are probably wondering what the hell are you talking about like why would he matter and I, I get that right but it's just a thing of why does he know about Miles being Spider-Man in this movie like what was the actual reason behind that it's like in the first movie you know he gets like jump scared and faints and all that and then in this movie he kind of has like one scene where Miles you know just interacts with him very quickly and then says like one line of dialogue and then he dips and he just isn't seen again it just makes me wonder a bit it's like like, is he just a throwaway character? Why was he even shown that? You know, it's a bit weird. Because, you know, in like other Spider-Man movies, he kind of has that one person where they know his identity and then he becomes close to them and they help him out in some way. But with him, he's just there, I guess. So I was kind of expecting him to play a wee bit of a role in this movie somehow, but he just didn't at all. But maybe he'll do something in the next movie. I have no fucking clue, to be honest. But at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. It's literally just a thing I thought about where I'm like, why is he there? You know, it's, it's just a small gripe I have. Another part of this movie that I really liked, which is a big part of the movie obviously, is the whole multiverse kind of thing. Now as I'm sure you guys have seen from the trailers, there are a lot of different variations of Spider-Man in this. And before watching the movie, I was kind of just wondering how they were going to implement that in the movie and how it was going to make sense. Because with something as wacky as that, I was a wee bit concerned with how they were going to make it into a serious kind of Lot, something that isn't too convoluted and I actually think they've done it really well and obviously with Miles being hunted down by all these different variations of Spider-Man I was also wondering how the hell that was going to happen and how they were going to make that into part of the plot and that was also done really well. I honestly think the reasoning they had for hunting Miles and the build up to that reason was perfectly done in this movie. I really liked it and also there are a lot of callbacks in this movie back to the original and I really like how that's done as well. It really makes you want to go back and watch the original and you'll like see things that will nod back to this movie and it's just really well done. But the only part of this movie that I don't think was too good, it wasn't done amazingly, was the ending. Now you're probably going to hear this from quite a lot of people critiquing the movie and it's a pretty bland take. You know, the ending was a bit disappointing. Everyone's going to have this kind of take. Well, pretty much everyone, I would guess. Now, I will say this if you go into the movie knowing that there's a part two it won't be anywhere near as disappointing because before going into this movie I knew there was going to be a part two and I knew this was part one because it was advertised as that in some like
like posters and all that. I'm pretty sure the title of the movie had part one in it before it got like a proper title. So I knew there was going to be a next part and I was ready for that. But I feel like a lot of people went into this movie not knowing that and it made the ending a lot worse for them than it actually is. Which is understandable because if you're going into this movie expecting everything it started to come to a satisfying conclusion, you're going to be disappointed. I get it. But at the same time, I honestly think the way they ended it with the way the plot is going and just where they kind of had to end it, they done the best they could have possibly done. It had like a wee bit of a kind of twist ending kind of thing and I will say it was a pretty predictable twist which made the ending a wee bit worse for me but they still done pretty much the best they could do with where the story was heading and everything. I, like I get it. They can't exactly make a five hour movie because most people aren't going to sit in a cinema for five hours. Five hours is a long time and that's even if it's five hours because the next movie could be a three hour film and I get they're also not going to change the plot to make the ending of the first part more satisfying like I get they done the best that they could really do here and I feel like a lot of people are kind of exaggerating how bad this ending to part one is but it is still understandable especially when you didn't know beforehand but it did take a lot of momentum that the movie was building and kind of just dump it there you know just like dump it in the corner like you need to wait nearly a year now sorry my bad but at least it's not like two or three years that we have to wait you know at least it's just under a year but imagine how hype this would have been if they made this movie right said it had a part one and two had that ending and then the next part came out in like a couple weeks or even a month imagine how fucking hype that would be that would be crazy even if this movie was delayed like eight months or some shit oh man imagine but yeah this ending was still pretty unsatisfying and also makes comparing it to the original a lot harder since the original did have a really satisfying conclusion while this movie it feels incomplete but still an amazing movie but that kind of makes it feel worse because an incomplete amazing movie uh it does sting a bit all right another thing i'll just quickly go over is the cameos and references and all that i think they were managed pretty well in this movie overall as you'd expect there's a lot of references here a lot of different spider-men but there's some kind of more surprising appearances as well now this is a minor spoiler here so be warned but there are some live action character appearances in this movie like i was pretty much good with all of it right but some of the live action ones were a bit too much for me you know, like, it was like a wee bit too much like it, it did look a bit strange because when you're watching a movie that is fully animated and then you just see a random real life person or i shouldn't say random but, you know a real life person on screen alongside other characters it looks weird it does it looks like i'm watching space jam or some shit right but i didn't mind it too much you know it wasn't like a big deal it's not like they were on screen for ages or anything and also one of these live action references in particular were actually really good like i liked that inclusion of them it just made a lot of sense and it was just a really good idea to include them to be honest but yeah like i was saying earlier this movie is really difficult compared to the original one and that's mainly down to the ending just because of how abrupt the ending is and how incomplete the movie feels without that satisfying conclusion while also in comparison the original having such a complete conclusion but honestly i would like to say that the story of this movie was overall better until that unsatisfying end which might be a bit of a hot take all right it might be but i just really liked how they handled the story in this movie and a lot of the characters it's just that ending man and because of that i'd say it's pretty even but in terms of other stuff like the animation is definitely a step up in this movie for sure i would also say the characters in this movie were an improvement just character development wise and just in terms of new characters in general but i would say the music was done better in the original so overall it's pretty even for me for which one i prefer i think i might be swaying slightly towards this new movie but not by much like i honestly think the majority of people that watch this movie that have watched the original will have swaying opinions on which one they prefer if not just thinking they're even which is mad to even say because the first one like i said was such a good movie so overall this movie is absolutely fantastic definitely a must watch even if you're not the biggest fan of you know like marvel or spider-man or even just animated films you will most likely enjoy it it's just a beautifully crafted movie with animation that blew my extremely high expectations out of the water the movie may not be perfect and some gripes that i mentioned will 
probably be bigger deals to some people than it is to me. But either way, I think most people will really enjoy this movie regardless. But I rate Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse 9 random Spider-Men out of 10. And honestly, I can't wait for the next movie. That is going to be something else. So yeah, that's about it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this review. Tell me what you thought about the movie in the comments. Tell me if you agree with my opinion. Do you think my opinion's absolutely garbage? Also, if you enjoyed this review, give it a like so I know to make more reviews like this in the future. And yeah, hopefully I'll see you in the next one.